February 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 21 and 22 from the Old Testament. These are the decisions that you will set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he will go out free without paying anything. If he came in by himself, he will go out by himself. If he had a wife when he came in, then his wife will go out with him. If his master gave him a wife and she bore sons or daughters, the wife and the children will belong to her master and he will go out by himself. But if the servant should declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master must bring him to the judges and he will bring him to the door or the doorpost and his master will pierce his ear with an awl and he shall serve him forever. If the man sells his daughter as a female servant, she will not go out as the male servants do. If she does not please her master, who has designated her for himself, then he must let her be redeemed. He has no right to sell her to a foreign nation, because he has dealt deceitfully with her. If he designated her for his son, then he will deal with her according to the customary rights of daughters. If he takes another wife, he must not diminish the first one's food, her clothing, or her marital rights. If he does not provide her with these three things, then she will go out free without paying money. Whoever strikes someone so that he dies must surely be put to death. But if he does not do it with premeditation, but it happens by accident, then I will appoint for you a place where he may flee. But if a man willfully attacks his neighbor to kill him cunningly, you will take him even from my altar that he may die. Whoever strikes his father or his mother must surely be put to death. Whoever kidnaps someone and sells him or is caught still holding him must surely be put to death. Whoever treats his father or his mother disgracefully must surely be put to death. If men fight and one strikes his neighbor with a stone or with his fist and he does not die, but must remain in bed, and then if he gets up and walks about outside on his staff, then the one who struck him is innocent, except he must pay for the injured person's loss of time and see to it that he is fully healed. If a man strikes his male servant or his female servant with a staff so that he or she dies as a result of the blow, he will surely be punished. However, if the injured servant survives one or two days, the owner will not be punished, for he has suffered the loss. If men fight and hit a pregnant woman and her child is born prematurely, but there is no serious injury, he will surely be punished in accordance with what the woman's husband demands of him, and he will pay what the court decides. But if there is serious injury, then you will give a life for a life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. If a man strikes the eye of his male servant or his female servant so that he destroys it, he will let the servant go free as compensation for the eye. If he knocks out the tooth of his male servant or his female servant, he will let the servant go free as compensation for the tooth. If an ox gores a man or a woman so that either dies, then the ox must surely be stoned and its flesh must not be eaten, but the owner of the ox will be acquitted. But if the ox had the habit of goring and its owner was warned and he did not take the necessary precautions and then it killed a man or a woman, the ox must be stoned and the man must be put to death. If a ransom is set for him, then he must pay the redemption for his life according to whatever amount was set for him. If the ox gores a son or a daughter, the owner will be dealt with according to this rule. If the ox gores a male servant or a female servant, the owner must pay 30 shekels of silver and the ox must be stoned. If a man opens a pit or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it and an ox or donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit must repay the loss. He must give money to its owner, and the dead animal will become his. If the ox of one man injures the ox of his neighbor so that it dies, then they will sell the live ox and divide its proceeds, and they will also divide the dead ox. 
or if it is known that the ox had a habit of goring and his owner did not take the necessary precautions, he must surely pay ox for ox and the dead animal will become his. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he must pay back five head of cattle for the ox and four sheep for the one sheep. If a thief is caught breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there will be no blood guilt for him. If the sun has risen on him, then there is blood guilt for him. A thief must surely make full restitution. If he has nothing, then he will be sold for his theft. If the stolen item should in fact be found alive in his possession, whether it be an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he must pay back double. If a man grazes his livestock in a field or a vineyard, and he lets the livestock loose and they graze in the field of another man, he must make restitution from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. If a fire breaks out and spreads to thorn bushes so that the stacked grain or standing grain or the whole field is consumed, the one who started the fire must surely make restitution. If a man gives his neighbor money or articles for safekeeping and it is stolen from the man's house, if the thief is caught, he must repay double. If the thief is not caught, then the owner of the house will be brought before the judges to see whether he had laid his hands on his neighbor's goods. In all cases of illegal possessions, whether for an ox, a donkey, a sheep, a garment, or any kind of lost item about which someone says, this belongs to me, the matter of the two of them will come before the judges, and the one whom the judges declare guilty must repay double to his neighbor. If a man gives his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep, and it dies or is hurt or is carried away without anyone seeing it, then there will be an oath to the Lord between the two of them that he has not laid his hands on his neighbor's goods, and his owner will accept this, and he will not have to pay. But if it was stolen from him, he will pay its owner. If it is torn in pieces, then he will bring it for evidence, and he will not have to pay for what was torn. If a man borrows an animal from his neighbor, and it is hurt or dies when its owner was not with it, the man who borrowed it will surely pay. If its owner was with it, he will not have to pay. If it was hired, what was paid for the hire covers it. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged and has sexual relations with her, he must surely endow her to be his wife. If her father refuses to give her to him, he must pay money for the bride price of virgins. He must not allow a sorceress to live. Whoever has sexual relations with a beast must surely be put to death. Whoever sacrifices to a god other than the Lord alone must be utterly destroyed. You must not wrong a foreigner nor oppress him, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must not afflict any widow or orphan. If you afflict them in any way and they cry to me, I will surely hear their cry. And my anger will burn and I will kill you with the sword and your wives will be widows and your children will be fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people who are needy among you, do not be like a money lender to him. Do not charge him interest. If you do take the garment of your neighbor in pledge, you must return it to him by the time the sun goes down, for it is his only covering. It is his garment for his body. What else can he sleep in? And when he cries out to me, I will hear, for I am gracious. You must not blaspheme God or curse the ruler of your people. Do not hold back offerings from your granaries or your vats. You must give me the firstborn of your sons. You must also do this for your oxen and for your sheep. Seven days they may remain with their mothers, but give them to me on the eighth day. You will be holy people to me. You must not eat any meat torn by animals in the field. You must throw it to the dogs. God, I was thinking about... I was thinking about Moses the other day and having to to deal with almost three-quarter million people. Um, and not just the surface story that we're so used to reading the Bible and kind of saying, yeah, 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 we, we know that story about the wandering in the desert and the Ten Commandments. But I was thinking about the real day-to-day -day life. You know, there was people having babies and there was people dying and uh, there was fights and disagreements and 
and all of the things that we actually experience in our day-to-day life, uh, but they were having to do it without any sort of governing rule at that time. And Moses was trying to keep everybody in check and everybody happy and everybody focused on you, God. And so here today we, we see, of course, the, the Ten Commandments have already been handed down, but these are like these are more the guidelines and the laws of the day of, of how to deal with each other and, and what the repercussions would be um, of certain situations. And I was thinking about these because all of, all of the laws we have now um, came from these original guidelines that you, that you gave them. You can even see some of our current day laws uh, right from these uh, exact guidelines that you're talking to them about. And I think one of the big pieces we miss is that you handed down these guidelines to Israel to help them not only live together, but to uphold themselves as your people and that you were in charge and that you were always in charge. And I think about all the postings on Facebook and Twitter and various social media and and watching my friends argue with each other over politics and gun control and different things like that. That ultimately we have to remember who is in charge. That just because we don't like who is in a position of power or we don't agree with some law that that you are always in control of everything that is happening. Uh, That the entire earth, as you put it, is yours. God, I pray today to help me keep that in mind. That if somebody does something to me that I don't happen to like, that you are still in control and I am still to forgive and and give that person grace. That if somebody who is in a position of power, whether it be a police officer or the President of the United States, does something that I don't particularly care for, that you've actually commanded us to, to not only remember that you're in charge, but to also be respectful to the people that are in power and to pray for them. Again, all because you are in control. And we as your children need to keep that in mind as we deal with day in and day out issues, frustrations, and things that we may or may not agree with in our daily lives. God, thank you for being in control of everything, for having ultimate authority over everything and every person here on earth. That alone takes away any fear I have of anything that's, that's soon to come or will come in the future. I don't have to be worried or fear who's in control of our government because I know ultimately you're in charge. I don't have to fear or be worried or be upset by certain people because ultimately I know you're in charge. I don't have to be concerned or worried in the slightest about current situations I'm dealing with. What will be, what will happen in the future? How will this turn out? How do we get from here to there? What will I do about this? Because you are in control. And that's the only thing I need to hold on to. And that's the only part of energy that I need to exert today is just simply remembering that you're in control of everything. God, I just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.